Hello and welcome to 15 Minutes with 15 Minute Gamer, episode 2 of this brilliant podcast. The best 15 minutes you'll have of your life, guaranteed. I literally just coined that phrase earlier on Twitter and I was like, hmm, eh, I get a guarantee it. Um, and here you are. So this is episode 2. Episode 1 done pretty good. We had... I think about 50 views, which for my channel, pretty good. I was pretty happy with that. I haven't advertised it too much or pushed it. I've mentioned it a few times. However, 50 views for a brand new feature on the channel, I am very, very happy with. So if you listened, thank you. And I'm glad you joined me on the second one. This one is a lot more generalized. This isn't a one subject. This is lots of subjects. That's how it's going to work. Lots of subjects one week. Next week, we're going to go for something a bit specialised, a subject matter, that sort of thing. So that's 15 minutes for 15 minute game I covered. Yes, first thing off the list, and a minute down. Next up, Twitter. Yes, this month, I finally, finally hit 5,000 followers. That was a milestone. <laughs> Unfortunately, it went about 5,005 and then keeps dropping. I'm like, no, don't go below 5,000 again. So yes, that is it, 5,000 now. So that is fantastic. I'm very happy with that. And you know what? Just thank you for being there and joining in. And you know, the conversation's really good. I've been adding loads of gamers just to get... And all that, the gamers have been adding back and stuff. And it's just been really, really good. So that is very good. Talking about things. YouTube. YouTube's had the best month ever over on this. Um, I've had the most subs, the most views, the most minutes watched, the most likes, the most comments, everything has just been the best month. So, yep, thank you for that. That was the admin side of this uh, 15 minute with 15 minute game podcast. We're now moving on to the games. So, in the news, in the news, we had this week the Nintendo Switch. So this appeared on NeoGAF, and apparently a guy called Hip Hop the Robot, which pretty terrible name to be fair, managed to get his hands on Nintendo Switch early. Now, the Nintendo Switch isn't something I am interested in. I'm not a massive Nintendo fan. I'm not a massive portable fan. So the Nintendo Switch for me, battery life seemed a bit low. The price was extortionate for what you got, which was basically a lot of money, and you got nothing with that, no games, no extra controls, no anything. For me, just way, way too expensive. Nintendo is always kind of went, well, lately anyway, for the more casual market. You know, the DSs were reasonably priced, the Wii was a reasonable price. So it was kind of that second console you had, and it got their casual gamers to be their first console, and they got the hardcore you know, mainstream game, and maybe to pick up a Wii as a second console like I did. I think this price, since you can get a PS Pro with games for cheaper, are you going to get that, or are you going to get a Nintendo Switch which comes with nothing? Um, when you look at the extra stands, when you look at the extra controls, etc., it just the price starts going up dramatically. So, anyway, this kid or guy has got hold of it. Uh, you can see it over on NeoGAF. And it shows basically the start through screens and the loading and stuff. It's very simple format on the screen. It's kind of what I was expecting from Nintendo, to be fair. And most people seem to be pointing out the fact that of the 32 gigabyte you get on board, which I think is way too small, should be at least, you know, around about the 250, 500, but never mind. Especially for that price. Um that you only get 25.9 gigabyte available because of you know the storage space the system's taken up which is to be fair to be expected i don't think that's too dissimilar from something like the operating system on the android or whatever the android system takes up quite a lot however when you're installing games on this and they're not little games i know the whole point is we'll get sd cards and put them in but that's going to be in the way very 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 quickly that 25 gig isn't going to last long at all um which i was kind of like oh, it's enough no little nail on that coffin of that switch for me however it's not something i will never pick up it might be something after a year or two if it develops and if nintendo keep you know supporting it because you know what nintendo are like remember the wii u remember the wii 
Yeah, they tend to get the thing and then they just go, meh, nah, here's some games, and that's about it. So we'll see. I'm very skeptical over it because I know what Nintendo are like. So anyway, Nintendo Switch, you can catch the screens, it looked it looked alright, to be fair, it looked probably as I was expecting. Um next up this weekend, running from Thursday, February twenty third until Sunday, February twenty seventh, is the open co op but not co-op because you can play a single player. Wildlands, Tom Clancy Wildlands, I'm so excited about this. Um, you also get another province as well on this one. You only got one province on the closed beta, so the open beta is going to run for uh, from Friday to Sunday. So, Thursday to Sunday, so a couple of days. Um, and we'll get the extra province as well, so that is really, really good. So, I'm uh, kind of excited about that. And there was a few people I know who didn't get to try the beta. And I'm looking forward to them trying this open one and seeing what they think of it. Also getting stuck in a little bit more. I mean, for me, it's a must-buy anyway for me. Once I played the close bit, I was like, this game is good. I really enjoyed it. Yes, it wasn't polished in places. Yeah, it's not a tactical shooter. It's very arcadey. The vehicles handle arcadey. But I like that. I'm there to mess around in there. I want to get a helicopter and fly it into a base, land on top of a truck, jump out, guns blazing, and kill everyone. That's just what I want to do. I don't want a serious shooter from it. I want to have fun with my friends. Obviously, it's still kind of in, in my review on the channel. I do mention I just hope that they get the single player aspect right as well. I played a little bit of it, and yes, the AI were good, but like the Division, and I hope it's not like that, I started to get really bored when I played with by myself. With friends, really good game. However, that's what I'm sort of gamer who I do like to play single player, and my friends always on online. So you know, like half the time I'm left playing by myself. So it needs to have that single player aspect, and that's the only thing that's kind of holding back. Yeah, there was the cover system I didn't really like, and there was a couple of little bits and bobs, lots of bugs, but it graphically looks really good, sound looks good, and they've got to keep that variation going. I want to see. I know it's got 21 provinces. I want to see them be different and different missions in each one. If every single mission is, every single province is basically go here, kill them. Right, that's an escort mission. Right, that's a radio tower. Right, that's steal a car. Right, that's that. And you've got to repeat that for 21 times over. It's going to get very boring very, very quickly. And that was part of the criticism level towards Mafia, the latest Mafia one was it was the same thing over and over and over and over again. So it'll be interesting with the second province that we get to play in to see what sort of missions and what not on that. So that is next weekend, and I, for one, will definitely be playing that on the Sunday. Hopefully the Thursday and the Friday and Saturday. But I will be playing that for a lot of the time. On the announcement front of things, Crash Bandicoot is back. Kind of. Crash Bandicoot's Insane Trilogy Revival, that's a bit of a mouthful, has been given an official release date via a teaser trailer. Ooh, that came out the other day. And the remaster contains the original PlayStation 1 Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot 2, The Cortex Strikes Back, and Crash Bandicoot Warped. And it'll be officially launched on the 30th of June 2017 to PlayStation 4. Now, Crash Bandicoot is one of my earliest console memories when i think back of playing on the playstation one the demo disc <laughs> and crash bandicoot are really the two things that really stick out and when you're playing that little mission in uncharted 4 which was a really good throwback and i knew when i played that that this news would be coming soon that i was just like yeah, that was a cool little game. I never got very far. I would doubt I even got even caught of the way through. I certainly never, ever completed it. I don't think I was ever that skillful. It was a hard game. Well, it was a hard... Yes, or am I just rubbish a game? And I don't know. I think it was a hard game. However, that was kind of like... Yeah, that was tough. Um, Crash Bandicoot 2 I played. Crash Bandicoot Warped. I can't really remember if I played... It's If I have, it's melded into the many other games I've played. So, you know what? Not something I'll probably pick up. Um, I'm sure it'll be one of them titles. They'll probably pitch it around about the 1999 mark. I'd probably guess at this early stage. 
it'll be one of them in sale things that if it comes on the PSN store for cheap one day, I'll just be like, Ooh, and pick it up and have a bit of retro gaming going on. In other news, there was kind of the whole PewDiePie thing. I'm not really going into that. Basically, he posted some, well, people are saying anti-Semitic things, and he, like, kill all Jews and stuff, and he's, you know, he's been talking in these videos. Ugh, I, I just don't know where you stand on that one. Um, what he's done is put some things as a joke, and as I'm, it's not really my place to comment. Like, you could make a whole half our 45 minute video discussing all I can't even bother but basically got dropped by Disney and things aren't looking well there I'm sure you can go back to his million billion dollar house with all his money all the girls in the world all his cars and have and cry into his mattress at night I'm sure by getting dropped by Disney it won't really affect him too much he still has millions and millions of subscribers so yeah um, and yeah, some games came out. Quite a few games came out, actually. For Honor, Halo Wars 2, and Sniper Warrior 4 as well. Now, I'm not picking any of these up. And the reason for that is just because in March we have Horizon Zero Dawn, Mass Effect, and of course, Wildlands coming out. It would be pointless picking any of these up. I just would not play them. I'd probably play them for an hour, an hour and a half or something, and then just stop playing them. So I'm just like, you know what? Again, there'll be sale ones when I see them in the future. I'll be like, you know what, let's give it a go. Ferrana looks pretty interesting with the battles between, you know, the, the knights and samurais and stuff. All looks pretty cool. Halo Wars 2, I've been reading some reviews, getting some really good reviews. It's supposed to be a really good RTS for the console. I don't have an Xbox, however, we can get for the PC. PC is a home of real time strategy. Apparently, you can't even bind keys in this game i was watching a video of uh, total biscuit you can't bind keys you can't change a lot of them that worries me for an rts and yes it might be one of the best rts on the console how will that come over to the pc i'm interested to see and you know what I might pick it up i'm gonna see how the reviews roll in and pc players how what they think of it and so forth sniper warrior 4 i played sniper warrior 3 and sniper warrior 2 I'm not very good at stealth, I'm going to have to say that. You know me, I'm all guns blazing. I'm not one of these ones to sit quietly in the background and snipe people off. If you like Snipe and Sniper Warrior 4 is your ideal game, it does have one of the best things in the world, which is like Mortal Kombat X-ray kills. You shoot from miles off and you see the head explode and you see the eyes getting blown up and everything's just really, really cool in that sense. If you like that sort of thing, it's going to be a thing for you. It's getting pretty good reviews. Apparently the story's rubbish, but the gameplay is really good. And finally, for the final two and a half minutes of this video, I'm going to talk about the return of LSPDFR to my channel. Oh my god, I love this game. It is a be a cop mod, basically, for Grand Theft Auto V. You mod in the police cars, you mod in all the scripts, you go to different calls, you can, you know, like, you go to hit and runs, Grand Theft Autos, you chase people around, and I just love it. It's such a good mod for a game. It's really well done. The scripts are made just by modders. The vehicles are made just by modders as well. So you get some really interesting designs. And most of the time it works. Well, I'm gonna, that's a lie. Most of the time it breaks. I've spent hours and hours and hours this week trying to get LSPDFR modded into Grand Theft Auto V. And oh, I've had so many crashes. I've had your scripts crashing. It's something very common on this game. It's not just me that suffers from it. I have watched other YouTube channels. Some admit it when it crashes. Some just gloss over it and like pretend, you know, like just shoot into a different part of the video or do a cut or whatever. But I know it's not just me, so I don't worry about it. A lot of the time, it happens. And all it does is the game just, it'll just come up with a crash. You can't go any further. The script's crashed. However, go and check the videos out. Even if you're not really into the whole modern scene or the police, it's just a lot of fun because you never know what the AI is going to do. Like, I was recording a video yesterday and I was stopping the RV thing in the middle of the road. And this truck just rammed the RV and was like pushing it down the road. The RV's little wheels are turning trying to escape and it was just like, just a moment of I just didn't ex expect or see that coming. And I really enjoy that game. It's just so funny. There's been so many memorable equipment occasions playing that game so go and check that out on the channel lspdfr if you have grand theft auto 5 for the pc grab a copy of this mod 
and just check it out. It's pretty easy to mod the things in. They won't always work, but they are pretty easy. And that brings us nicely to the last 25 seconds of the podcast. So all I can say is I hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast. I'm going to try and keep these going weekly, unless if work or anything gets in the way. It's been a lot of subjects covered. It's been a generalised one. In the next few weeks, we will have some very special guests on this show. We're going to have developers coming on. We're going to have a motor and journalist coming on and all sorts. It's going to be really, really good. There's going to be some big people on here and a lot of fun. (sighs) And that is it. 15 minutes covered. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have, and I'll catch you all later. Goodbye.